Hey there, and welcome back to day two of the live coverage from Dice Tower Con 2018. Or for those of you watching who may have been out late celebrating Independence Day yesterday and may have a bit of a headache, welcome back. I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, your host, but I'm also joined by my wonderful co-host, Marty Cannell from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. Chaz, it's great to be here on the second day yes. of the 2018 version of what? Oh, that reminds me. Um, we mentioned yesterday that uh, there would be some corrections. Cor before, yeah. before we get into the show at all, we do need to issue a correction for our repeated um, incorrect information that this was the... We misunderstood that this was the 2018th Dice Tower Con. It's not? No, that was a grievous error. Because, uh, of course, when you're counting by years, you start at zero. So this is actually the 2019th oh. Dice Tower Con. So welcome to the 2019th Dice Tower, Dice Tower Con. Con. Mm -hmm. Got it. Wow. We're really glad that you're here. And uh, if you are here and you didn't join us yesterday because it was a holiday, um, you may be wondering... For those in the U.S. For those in the U.S., that's right. Uh, there may be other holidays in other countries, you know, maybe... On July 4th, there may be. Yeah, like St. Swiven's Day in Australia. Oh, excuse me? Yeah. St. who? St. Swiven. Well, who's that? He's the one that he, he created all... He's the, like a patron saint? The patron saint of, of farm irrigation. He's the one that, that made all the piping possible throughout all of the Midwest or mis middle of Australia. That would make a really good themeless Euro. It, wow. Yes. Somebody needs to get on that. I'm really glad that you brought that back to board games, too, because I had no idea where I was going with it. So <laughs> I appreciate that very much, buddy. You're welcome. Okay. So in case you are still watching this stream and you're wondering, <laughs> you know, this is the Dice Tower channel. Where's Tom, Sam, Z, Miscellanea? You know, I just want to let... Uh, I love Miscellanea. They do a fantastic job. I know, right? <laughs> Plus, they brought irrigation to middle Australia. They did. They yeah. should make a themeless Euro out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Great, we've already laughed ourselves. <laughs> anyway, this is Dice Tower Con in Orlando, Florida, Dice Tower's backyard. And since this is their, the convention that they kind of put on anyway, mm -hmm. uh, they actually use this as a vacation and they are actually out there enjoying the convention. And so they needed a couple other people to trick into hosting the, uh, the live stream for them all day. And we were happy to be those people that they tricked. That's right, so they some reason trusted us <laughs> to come onto their channel <laughs> and broadcast for like six hours a day. <laughs> yeah, so really looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. We're going to burn this place to the ground. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> Themeless Euro. <laughs> day two is off to a rollicking start. So um, let's talk about day two a little bit. What can people expect that's coming up today? Uh, so today we've got uh, several uh, publishers and uh, other creators coming in today. Uh, on the schedule, assuming mm -hmm. they show up, things may change. We have Meeple Sources going to be coming in later. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're coming up in about uh, at uh, 9.30 Eastern time. That's right. We have WizKids coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Bezier Games. Bezier Games. Uh, Portal Games will be here talking about some of their games. In Very fact, cool. we're going to get to try a new Portal yes. game tonight, Detective. They'll be coming out at Gen Con. The designer, Ignacy Chevichek, who also runs Portal Games, is going to be teaching us how to play, which I'm very excited yes. about. Yes, and he's going to be teaching us tonight, and he's on the show tomorrow. Right. So that's going to be really interesting. So today, I think, when we talk to um, the other gentleman from Portal. Luke, yes. Luke, we'll be talking about everything else, uh, Portal. And then tomorrow, I think we'll be focusing on Detective. Right, I think one of the things they're going to be talking about is Monolith Arena, which I'm excited about. Yes. I hope we're going to be talking about it, because that's from the Nurishima Hex world. Yeah. And I, I like that world, and uh, we We've talked about it on our show, Rolling Dice and Taking Names. My co-host and I, Tony, just love Nurishima Hex, so I'm excited to go back into that universe and see what other games they got. Plus, we're going to have two special guests this afternoon. Uh -huh. A designer, Rob Davio, is going to be on the show. Uh-huh, a wonderful gentleman. And also, Eric Lang's going to close out the show. He's going to be mm -hmm. our last interview. He's always a hoot to talk to. Right. And I think we have confirmed unless he backs out, that uh, Jamie Keggy from The Secret Cabal will be uh, in our third chair at 4.30 uh, for our final segment this afternoon. And you'll want to tune into that because that's going to be a little interesting game that we're all going to be playing together that involves, well, let's just say we're going to have to have trash cans near us because 
it could get uh, pretty nasty. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting uh, experience, um, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't that one. I'm not exactly sure if I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. But what we want to do is uh, we'll try to keep you update with what's going to be going on throughout the day at the end of each segment. What's coming up? The times again. All times are going to be Eastern time. And if you want to, you can follow uh, us on Twitter. You can follow me at Dyson Names and Chaz at Dice Paradise. And follow us. And throughout the day, we'll be linking or, or sharing times that these different publishers will be coming on. So you'll make sure not to miss them. Yes. Yes. Now, yesterday. We uh, closed out the show by uh, going over a few questions that we've been asked on Twitter with people who use the DTCQA hashtag. So I want to revisit this and what the purpose of this hashtag is. Uh, what we have is we have this little bad boy up here that we'll be using. Um, bad boy. <laughs> He's being ugly. Those 14 years of improv classes just finally paid off in one, one big, magnificent improv moment. Did they? <laughs> anyway, I was saying something about this hashtag. So what we did yesterday is we want your questions, your thoughts, your ideas about Dice Tower Con or questions for us, questions about the con, whatever you want, use this hashtag. Because what we did yesterday is we actually put a little twist on this about midday mm -hmm. and we had a couple of publishers come in and we spit on them as well. But we had a couple of cu publishers come I was going to let it go that he just spit on the table, but you had to say something. <laughs> Mix the table. I was going to try to be professional and not say anything, but then he started cleaning his spittle off the top of the uh, top of the tabletop here. So professional, not an option. So there's that 14 years of professional broadcasting <laughs> that you, uh, <laughs> that you paid for. Yeah. The, ironically, that spittle was an ad lib. So <laughs> who knew? Improvisational <laughs> spittle. Yes. Irrigate I missed that class. Australian irrigation. Seamless Euro. <laughs> Seamless Euro. Anyway, so what we did yesterday is with some of the publishers that we brought in, we played a game with them, mm -hmm. and we ha if they won the game, they won a $25 Cool Stuff Inc. gift certificate for a viewer who had used that hashtag on Twitter. That's right. And I just want, we have picked our winners. Yes. And I've contacted them by Twitter instant message. Okay. Um, but just in case they're not at the Twitters, um, I, Who are those winners? I just want to say Sam S. is the first winner. Um, Congratulations, Sam. Yes. And then also Christian K. was the other winner. So if you are either Sam S. or Christian K. or you think you are and you're on Twitter, <laughs> check your instant messages, your direct messages I on Twitter. Sam S. Let me check. <laughs> And check your instant messages uh, for a message from Dice Paradise. Um, I contacted you directly. And uh, give me the information that's necessary in order to complete this. And we'll get a $25 Cool Stuff Inc. gift certificate sent out to you right away. Or, well, actually, it might be after the convention. But. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and make sure to pay attention to uh, the live stream throughout the day, as we may be giving away more gift certificates throughout the day probably using that same hashtag that's right over there. Yes, yeah. And, I, and obviously you can use that hashtag for a couple of different things. Uh, one, we'd love for you to ask questions to us throughout the day because uh, throughout the segments where Chaz and I are talking, we may pull up some questions, answer a few questions here and there, or if you just have comments about the live stream, mm -hmm. if they're nice, share them. If they're not, you can use a different hashtag. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Smooth. I, I, that almost went right by me. That's yeah. darn. I actually wish I didn't catch that. <laughs> you know, would you, Mr. Connell, would you like an example of some of the questions that people have brought in? Why, yes, Mr. Marler, I would. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> because it was either this or we're just sitting here talking about themeless heroes about irrigation for another 10 I'll minutes. play it. <laughs> All right, here's an example of a question that we didn't get to yesterday, but I thought was really good. Uh, okay. I have like three or so of them here. Um, what uh, Gen B uh, asks, what content creator do you wish you could switch channels with for a day? Oh, it's a piece of cake. Is it? Oh, I, I, oh, I'm no. having a hard this, time. This is a piece of cake. For anybody that has followed me in the past, uh -huh. they know that I have a history with one Rodney Smith yes. from Watch It Play. Part of that history is that Mr. Rodney Smith from Watch It Play uh -huh. has never done a video for Star Wars Rebellion. Oh, you mentioned it on day two. I owe, I owe Rodney 20 bucks. Okay. <laughs> so it was gonna be from day three when I mentioned it? That was when hey, I was in the pool. I didn't ask the question, somebody <laughs> asked the question, so here's the deal. Go on. I would take this channel where people have been begging, pleading, 
for a good rules overview of Star Wars Rebellion. Look, it takes a little bit to learn that game. I've played the game. I love the game. Oh, it's a great game. And yeah. there are other people that have made some really good uh, how to play uh, of Star Wars Rebellion. Yes, yes. But for some reason, uh, Rodney just refuses to do it. So I would go, I would fly up to Prince Ed Edward, at Prince Edward Island, I had to think about it, PEI, <laughs> and I would uh, basically run him out of his basement. Okay. And I would go in there, uh -huh. I would shoot a Star Wars Rebellion, then burn every copy of Strike he had. <laughs> oh, oh! you got to get that little jab in the strike, huh? You just couldn't let it go. You just had to, you had to go and mention Strike. What was the bet on that one? How, how soon did I mention that? <laughs> oh, I got to refinance my house to pay off that one. <laughs> I thought for sure that would be right out the gate. But wait a minute, Strike. How would you describe that game Strike for anyone who might not know, who may be listening? I am under contractual obligation. Yes, you are. Uh, due to a, uh, uh, not a bet, but a competition that I lost last year at Gen Con, where mm -hmm. we had a strike tournament at Gen Con. Yes. And the, uh, I've always said that Strike uh, is a game, and if you've never played Strike, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a plastic arena. Yes. <laughs> uh, where you have dice that are, rep are, are gladiators represented by dice. Uh-huh. And you basically roll them into the arena, and the idea is to try to eliminate every other people's dice. Pretty straightforward. But the way you're describing it, would you say it's more than the sum of its parts? Like it's more than just dice in a bowl? Would you say that? I have to because I lost that tournament, and so it is gladiators in an arena. Oh, it's like sweet meats in my ears. Oh, every time I hear you say that. And so that's why this this year we're having another strike tournament. Oh, you are at Gen Con. Uh, yes, we are. All right, now, is it going to be kind of a uh, just kind of come and, and do it, or is it actually being set up as a special event? It is going to be a special event, and if you uh, follow our uh, podcast at RollDiceTakeNames.com, we're actually going to be selling tickets through Podplay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only we're gonna have 80 tickets available. We're gonna uh, be going to the old spaghetti warehouse. Okay. People are gonna be able to buy a ticket for ten dollars. Uh -huh. They're gonna be able to come. They're gonna be able to get uh, a uh, salad. Okay. An entree. Okay. A dessert. Okay. A drink. Really? Some special giveaways that everybody's gonna get. Sponsors are gonna have games that we're gonna give away, and everybody participates in the strike tournament. Oh my good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so the, the the spaghetti warehouse and the sponsors all kind of work together to yep. make that uh, to make yep. that happen. And it's going to be uh, Friday at Gen Con from five forty five to seven forty five. That is so cool. And you can follow us on Twitter, for, and we'll have more information. But yeah, so uh, because I lost last year, they are considered uh, gladiators in arena. Okay. My goal is is uh, when the people come to the strike tournament, they can choose a side: either uh -huh. dice in a bowl. Gladiators in the arena, we have a tournament, there's a championship at the end, and whoever wins dictates what we call it for the next year. <laughs> That's pretty clever. Mm -hmm. And anyway, now there's actually something on the line for you to regain that ability to call it whatever you want to. Dice in a bowl. <laughs> because actually, some of the games will be bowls with dice. Well, yeah. You know what I thought was fascinating? I, I was able to go to it uh, last year and participate in it myself, and I thought it was so neat that as people just showed up, and of their own volition, which team they wanted to be on, it was almost a 50-50 split. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. And what's really cool is the Ravensburg is republishing the game. Yes. You heard about this. Uh -huh. So it's a new version, but it's not uh, Gladiators in Arena anymore. It's based on elements. Yes. So like the dice are now elements. And I can't remember the full name of the game, but it's a new, a new strike game. It's going to be somewhat of the same rules. I think some of the dice may act a little bit differently. It, with all the different elements, you know, since it's different elements instead of just numbers, I, I'm assuming it's going to actually have a little bit of a different, uh, some different mechanisms in there. And maybe some different variants of the game that yeah, you can play. It yeah. probably has the same base game hope so. that you can play and then some variants on top of that. But that's going to be coming out. We hope to have maybe some demo copies at this event. Mm -hmm. that oh, the uh, oh. Ravensburg might could get for us. We're still working on that, but that way we can see how the new game plays that's going to be coming out later this year. That'd be sweet. Mm -hmm. That is really cool. So that's, uh, you said Friday at Gen Con. Yes, right, right? 545 to 745. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter to find out more information. Mm -hmm. uh, sometime this week, the tickets were supposed to go live on Pod Pledge, which I know that you uh, work with, where mm -hmm. you can go in and uh, purchase a ticket. And uh, they'll probably go pretty quick, I, I hope. A special guest, uh, talking about Rodney Smith coming back to me taking over his channel. Uh, Rodney Smith is actually the person that introduced us to Strike, yes. who is very much a gladiators in an arena type guy. Well, yes, he he's will a wise be, man. He will be a special guest at this, mm. defending his gladiators in an arena mantra. <laughs> so he will be there uh, fighting for gladiators on his side. 
You know, talking about conventions and talking about Mr. Smith and everything, you know, that's the thing about Rodney. I've noticed every convention, he brings some little game, and it's usually some obscure little game that he has found, mm -hmm. and it just takes off like wildfire. And I don't think it's because it, it's him introducing it. He He'll say has... it is. <laughs> this isn't live, is it? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. well I, th I think we're on a six-second delay. Uh, <laughs> dump button. <laughs> dump, we need a dump button. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> but but he has this knack for finding. Uh, Red Seven was one of them. Strike yes. is one of them. Yep. Um, I can't remember Quinto Quicks. One of those he introduced me to, yes. and I, I really liked it, and it took off. Oh, uh, well, Insider. Uh, in, Insider. Oh, that was one of his too. I, I remember playing it early with him sometime at like VGGCon yeah. before the better version that I like. I like uh, Where Words better. I do too. I yeah. do too. Uh, and also uh, the Mind. Uh, you could not pull him away from the Mind at BGG Spring. This is it a game? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, here oh. come the comment. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have the 50-50 split. It's, it's a game. <laughs> I, I, I think it's fascinating myself. It, it, it is a fascinating. It's a fascinating social experiment. Yes. If you've never played the mind, I, I highly recommend at least trying it just once. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I just I did a video. Of, it was actually uh, it reached the top ten of the hotness. That was in the top ten hotness on BGG last month. It, it was uh, it, the top ten hotness on BGG at Origins. Was it? Yep. I wow. think it ended up being the top because I think it was one of the first times it was available there from. Uh, Pandasaurus games. Yeah, yes. Pandasaurus had it there. At but Orleans. let me ask you, Mr. Marler, if uh -huh. you had to take over somebody's channel for one day, whose would it be? Because we're already taking over the Ice Tower, so you ain't got to worry about that one. Okay, yeah. Check. <laughs> for four days. <laughs> yeah. And we've already started to burn this place to the ground. <laughs> yep. You know, I, I, I have a lot of trouble coming up uh, with an idea within the board game sphere because, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things where everybody has their own voice there and everything. So I, I've had some trouble answering this question. And I think, actually, uh, I think, for me, uh, there's a, a channel called, uh, there, there's a podcast called The Weekly Planet, uh, who is, but oddly enough, is hosted by a couple of people in Australia. And I, I'm assuming that their farms and fields there are lush and green because of the wonderful irrigation. Of course. St. Swiven. Yes, St. Swiven. St. Swiven. Yeah. Swiven. Um, but he also has a channel, Mr. Sunday Movies, and oh. he just does like, you know, 10 things you missed in these trailers or reviews of movies or just other stuff. Sometimes they have this other series called Caravan of Garbage uh, where they take like an old bad video game or a terrible old Marvel uh, animated show from the 60s and they kind of just do review it in a, almost a tongue-in-cheek mystery science theater way almost. Um, and I, it's a change of pace and he does such amazing work. I love his delivery, I love everything. Uh, I think the, the uh, Mr. Sunday Movies channel would be one for one day if I could just do something and have be able to go in and take all my time and energy to produce a video like he does on that channel. That would be so fun and so neat to do. That's good. I have to check that out. I've heard of him, but I've never watched any of his stuff. So he's, I need to go check it out. He's fantastic. Uh, he's, 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 one of, he's one of my YouTube heroes in the way that he just goes out in his delivery and stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, stuff. that's cool. So that's interesting you went outside the board game yeah. sphere. Yeah. And I, actually, you know, may I do another one? Uh, well, who's going to stop me? He said only one. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, there's a gentleman called uh, uh, Scott Ner Nerslinger. Nerslinger. I apologize, Scott, for mangling your last name. I doubt you're watching. Anyway, but uh, Scott has this channel um, called, uh, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is live. Yes. You know what? I want to get it right. Oh, he's going to Google it. I, so. I just want to get this absolutely right. It's That's why we keep the laptops off, laptops off to the side for quick information. Yes. I believe it's uh, NerdSync. Thank you. Okay. Nerd, his, the series he does is Comic Misconceptions sometimes, okay. but his channel is NerdSync. N-E-R-D-S-Y-N-C. And uh, Scott's channel, NerdSync, he does these thing, uh, videos on comics. Uh, that he does these really interesting like 10 to 20 minute editorials on some sort of uh, thing about the psychology of or digs into some of the academics or uh, other things. kind of digs deep into some of these things about comics. He did like a four part series on the killing joke but all of these things about you know whether the Joker died at the end and the debate going on and some of the psychological stuff going on there. He did a whole series on Spider-Man about how Spider-Man was actually Marvel's horror story um, mm. and uh, talking about yeah, everything about how spiders and Spider-Man and he did a thing on like the colors of different villains and stuff. Um, so uh, NerdSync is a channel I totally respect the work that he does. He's engaging, he's entertaining, and uh, he's one of the people that I wish uh, could get to the point where he could do it full time and as much as he wants because he does really, really good quality work. Do you think the Joker was killed at the end of The Killing Joke? 
Ooh. I don't. I don't either. You don't either? I don't yeah. either. Now, for anyone watching, still, <laughs> that, that may wonder, the, 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 the reason why there is the, the debate uh, is that, just as a sidebar, the, the killing joke ends with this panel of uh, the Joker and Batman kind of facing each other, yes. confronting each other, and uh, to break the tension or whatever, at the very end, the Joker actually tells Batman a joke. And after this big fight and this big trauma that they've both gone, th gone through, Batman actually breaks and starts laughing at the joke. Right. And he kind of puts his hand on the Joker as yep. to hold himself up laughing or whatever. And then it kind of pans down to their feet as you see the Joker's laughter. And then the, it continues the last panel, still shows like the rain and their feet are gone and the laughter stops. So did Batman kind of take him away to jail or did Batman strangle him to end the Joker's yeah. reign of terror? It's one of those things I love to read about. Yes. And, and it's, uh, I think they talked to, uh, uh, is it Miller? Yes. The, no. Uh, uh, no, it wasn't Miller. No, no, no. Uh, I know uh, Brian Bolland is the artist. Brian yeah. Bolland is one of my favorite comic book People artists freaking of all time. Out. Killing Joke was written by... Not Brian Bolland. Wait, was it? No. No. Is it Frank Miller? Here, look it up real quick. Okay. So the thing is, though, the, the author uh, said uh, he, he never confirmed whether right. he died or not. Uh, from, from what I remember. Anyway, it's one of those things that's worth reading. It's definitely worth watching because it's uh, Alan, Alan Moore. Moore. Alan Moore. Uh, Watchmen. Uh, so it's one of those things that's worth watching. And there's actually an animated version of The Killing Joke. Have you seen it? I got super excited about it. It's one of my favorite comic stories of all time. I could almost tell you verbatim from memory Joker's speech where you're the ladies and gentlemen when he's in the circus yes. at the end. I was so excited about finally, especially that it's a true adaptation of the story, but they added on that terrible... Skip Batman. that. If you're going to watch it, honestly, just skip to the part where it starts with the comic book and yeah. skip to the part at the beginning. Yeah. Because then it's probably true to form. Yeah. yeah. But it was really great seeing Mark Hamill back in as the Joker. Yes. Uh, doing the Joker voice. Oh, but to me, when I hear the Joker, I hear Mark Hamill's voice and nobody oh, yeah. else's. Now, Kevin Conroy was Batman in this He too. was. Oh, he was. That's like the and, dream team. And Kevin Conroy is my Batman voice. Oh, oh yes. In no, he is. Yeah, his voice is Batman. In the head. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that's... Um, so okay. that's the other person that you would like to take over. Were there yeah. any other questions that popped up? There were. Let's get back to our questions real quick here. Um, the next question that caught my eye is, this is a good question about conventions in general. So Marty and Chaz, and I, I'm sure this is from Nick, and I'm sure Nick actually meant Chaz and Marty. But uh, Chaz and Marty, are you having fun or does this feel like work? I am having fun, but it is, it is work. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fun work. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there you go, because uh, Chaz and I have been working on uh, trying to put together little special things here and there for the past several months. Yes. And uh, we get here and we're doing it, and like the past two nights we've been sitting outside, sitting in the room, uh, working on the daily schedule. In fact, unless I'm wrong, Chaz, have you even played a game yet? Because I have not. Oh, ho, ho. oh, yes, this was actually one of the questions. Let's get in right now, into that now. Uh, I what got... about answering the fun work thing? I'll get back to that. <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> That's why he listed me first. <laughs> I got to play a game. I did. I got to play a oh, game. Oh, okay. But it required coordinating in advance and making sure I cleared uh, to, it cleared my schedule. So, um, but I got to play Lords of Vegas uh, yesterday with a couple of people that I, I know about that. I, I met at through conventions. Uh, Mur, who uh, was um, uh, the the center of the topic of the mockumentary that we did yes. a couple years ago. which if you have not checked this out, you need to go to uh, Chaz's YouTube channel mm -hmm. and check out the mockumentary we did. Gosh, has it been two years ago now? Uh, two or three at this point. Wow, it was a long time ago. Chaz put an excellent uh, uh, mockumentary together. It was for a charity, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, it was for the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund. Yeah. yeah and, 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 and it was really proud of, of what it raised. And uh, so uh, with, with Murr and his wife and also uh, Mariana Lennox, who I think um, is, is, is one of the, the, the Lennoxes, Trey and Mariana, um, I apologize if I'm butchering your name. I know it always comes out of my mouth incorrectly, like so many things that I say. But um, they, they're people that I met through conventions. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like convention buddies. And so I hooked up with them kind of before the show to make sure that we got in a game together. And I, and I made sure that I got it as early in the convention as possible because I knew that if I did not do it on the first day, right. it probably wouldn't happen because the evenings are full. It, it's, it makes you feel terrible coming to this convention. There's so many people that you know you want to hang out with and spend time with, but you never get to spend time with everybody. I know. And it was funny. I was uh, just coming, walking through the hall, coming over to the stage earlier today, and I ran into a local friend of mine who's in a, a gaming group uh, back home in Charlotte. And I said, hey, what'd you play? He said, oh, I played a six-hour game of Twilight <laughs> Imperium last night. And it was like, 
And he said, what have you played? I went, yeah, no, not, not a lot. So uh, it's one of those things when, when we're, you know, we got a lot of the streaming going on for the, not only today, but tomorrow and Saturday. So that's a lot of our time, but it's fun. Yes. Now, I mean, I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing, and it's fun to be able to talk to people, and you get to talk to the publishers, and you see what games are coming out. Yes. And it's one of those things that I may not get to enjoy these games till I get home, but still having a good time. Exactly, exactly. At the end of the day yesterday, I was exhausted. I hit that point yesterday evening when we were working on some of, you know, fleshing out today's stuff. I hit that point uh, about, you know, and about an hour before we called, about half hour before we called it quits, where I actually felt my brain kind of like, I'm done thinking, I, I, my creative juice is done for the day, and I was totally exhausted. But it's such fulfilling work. They, they, you know, the saying, if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. And uh, it's always fun to go out and be able to do anything creative like this. I mean, that, that's why I started doing the YouTube stuff is because I needed a creative outlet in my life again. So, right. Yeah. 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 Same here. Yeah. And, and speaking of uh, creative, yes. uh, you and I have been uh, thinking of some uh, potential game themes and ideas. Yes. Let's get into this because one of the uh, games that's out in the hotness area yes. right now, right now, right over there, right over there, behind there. Us. not it, behind the hashtag. Right behind. Yeah. Look behind the the hashtag there, which you can use to uh, send us questions and uh, comments that we will answer at the end of the day and potentially win a prize. That's if you're right. Just joining us because what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did uh, yesterday. We're going to sneak some contests into this live stream again today if we uh, when we can find the time. And so anyone just like yesterday and. I believe the people who, who won yesterday, are they still going to be in the pool? Are we going to be cumulative or are we going to be day by day? Let's uh, do it day by day. Cool. What that, do you think? That would, yeah. get, that would give new people a new chance to win who didn't have a chance to enter yesterday. Cool. And we can always mix it up. But so, yeah. so, so today's contests will be people who have used this hashtag today. Use this hashtag on Twitter. Send us a question. Send us a comment. Anything you want about us or Dice Tower Con or Dice Tower or gaming in general. And uh, at the uh, and anyone who uses this hashtag on Twitter will be entered into the contests today to win twenty-five dollar gift certificates from Cool Stuff Inc. But anyway, getting back to the hotness. One of the games out there that's hotness, which is a story, a development story, and I love about this game is My Little Scythe. Yes. Which is based on Scythe. But my little side, do you know the do you know the backstory behind it? I, I do not. Okay, so from my understanding, um, there was this gentleman who had a daughter who's uh, young. I'd say around ten or even younger, who uh, he wanted to introduce Scythe to, but you know she's really young. And it's a little bit of an advanced game, so he actually made a homegrown, grassroots, uh, self-made version. Uh, using My Little Pony, oh, cool. that still followed all the same general mechanisms, but was streamlined greatly. And he called it My Little Scythe, and he kind of just posted about it on a whim. And then it kind of uh, got this little bit of a cult following. There was a print and play version that was floating around on BGG and other things. And so uh, here he is creating this adaptation of, of Scythe called My Little Scythe. Now, you can imagine what happens when a successful publisher sees someone potentially infringing on their trademark in this way. Lawyer up. Yeah. Well, you know what Jamie Stegmeier, Stonemeyer Games did? What did he do? He embraced it. Oh, cool. He's so cool. So he actually apparently got in contact with the guy and working in tandem, reworked a version of the My Little Pony Scythe to be My Little Scythe. They, of course, had to strip out the My Little Pony IP. Sure, of course. But they took it and he, uh, in working with them, uh, they developed My Little Scythe, which is based on, um, Ho I believe Hobie Chow is the designer of the My Little Scythe version. So working with Hobie Chow, they developed, they kept it as true as possible to his, his vision, and they actually published a nice kids version of Scythe called My Little Scythe that uses little chibi animal figures and stuff yeah. for kids. So Scythe for kids. Yeah. And, it's, and it's out there on the floor right now, and it just makes me, it's one of those stories that makes me proud to be involved in this industry. Mm -hmm. And it looks really cool. It's, it's basically take side and you just kind of scale it down to more of a kid-friendly type, type yes. game. Instead, yeah. instead of mechs walking around, like you said, just the little, what do you pronounce them? Chib chibis? Little chibi, little chibi, little chibi yeah, yeah, yeah. The big heads, little bodies, yes. little animal food. Yeah. yeah. And it inspired us uh, because if if Hobie Chow can go and cash in on, on Scythe with a my little version of I'm it. I'm always looking to make a quick buck. There we go. There's got to be other games out there that we can come up with our own my little version of. Yes. So uh, we came up with a list of about uh, six of them here. And so we wanted to uh, share them with you. So what we I think what we should do mm -hmm. is let's have uh, the viewers out there, as we go through our list, we're going to do three rounds. Okay. Okay. I'll pitch one. 
you pitch one. Okay. And then out there, use the hashtag on Twitter to tell us which one in that round you would vote for, you would vote for, and why. And we'll go through each round. And so with, out of the two out of three, we'll, we'll kind of calculate up who gets the most votes. And out of who get, you know, who wins two out of three rounds will be the winner. And the other will give them a publishing contract from something. I don't oh, know. Okay. But the important thing is everyone who uses the hashtag to vote will, of course, be entered into today's contest. That's right. So we're uh, trying to help you win $25. Yes. I could use $25. <laughs> you should enter the contest. <laughs> I'm not always about to win. <laughs> fine, bloody fine print. All right, so here's round one. Round one, I'll start off. Okay. All right, so a couple years ago, uh, at a local convention, I got to play Daimacher. Oh, that's a beast. That is a fantastic beast of a game. It was at least three to four hours. Yep. Okay. And Daimacher, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is set in, uh, you're basically candidates running German elections. You have to influence the media, influence the workforce, and other things, and it's, it's just this wonderful, deep, intense political game, okay, of, of running German elections. So I thought of, how about my little Daischuler, which is German for the student, because uh, Daimacher is oh, German for had, the maker. We had a little foreign language lesson There today. we go. Yes, yes. I was going to. The be... German classes paid off. Uh, yes, 14 years of German classes <laughs> finally paid off. So, in my little Daischuler, okay, you are running for class president. And in the game, players will influence your classmates as you run for class presidents by hosting weekly pep rallies, sway voters with promises of Taco Tuesday, and bribe the glee club. So that's my little die schuler. I like that. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Accessible. Okay. You know, accessible, accessible for the for kids. Younger kids. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Well, well, here's one. Okay. So, <clears throat> so recently I've been getting into uh, the miniatures game Warhammer 40k. Yes. That is a brutal universe. Yes. Uh, where there are, are tyranids and space marines oh, with, with, with with guns killing each other, just ripping Endless each war. other. Endless war. Endless war. Yeah. Just horrible, horrible things happen. Maybe a little too mature I for hit. children. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. So instead of uh, Warhammer 40K, I'd like to introduce to you my little Warhammer 4. <laughs> so instead of 40K, just just <laughs> four. Okay, just a little four. Here you're going to control four space crossing guards. Oh, instead of Marines, okay, just yeah, little, okay. crossing guards. They're still in uniform. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. yeah. Uh, And uh, these these are modeled with futuristic water pistol technology. <laughs> okay. 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 Kids love water. Oh, pistols. yes. I mean, that's the thing. Nerf guns are not Nerf guns, but the water blasters. Yes, yeah. the super soakers. Yeah, there you go, the super soakers. Yeah, they're like, they're like Nerf guns, but not yeah. at all. With the goal to keep your team dry as you can, dry as possible, as you try to conquer the playground. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there you go. My little Die Schuler, mm -hmm. or my little Warhammer 4. That is round one. That is round one. Tell us which one you would vote for and why. And you know, you know what? Never mind. Do what we just said. I'm not going to change the rules. Because <laughs> that's not good. Not going to change the rules after you've started the game. All right. So, here. Let me start off round two. Okay. Round, round two. two. Round One two. One of my favorite universes to play in board games, mm -hmm. by far, mm -hmm. is the Lovecraftian universe. Oh, yes. It is weird. It is creepy. And if you ever read of any Lovecraft stories or play any of the Arkham Horror games like that, People are going insane. Oh, yeah. Going in different universes. There's very scary monsters. Big gates open. Monsters yeah, come monsters out. Monsters come through. So again, a little too mature for children. Yeah. So instead of Arkham Horror, I present to you my little heart. My little Arkham, the Willies. It's like, ooh. <laughs> kind of like a little bit scary. So it's not a horror. It's not a horror. It's just ooh, the Willies. Ooh, that's kind of, kind, of like, kind of got like the Willies. Okay. Unlock a portal to an unholy universe lurking either under your bed or in your closet late at night. Remember when you were kids mm -hmm. and it's like, I heard something. Yes, totally. And it's back like, when you were kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's yeah. like, and then it's like, the did that closet door open? You're giving me the Willies now. Under, under my bed. So, will it turn out to be a sinister monster from an alternate dimension, bent on devouring your sanity? Ugh. Or just a little teddy bear, Dr. Cuddles, casting a spooky shadow in the moonlight? <laughs> Which is typically what it is. Yes, yeah. It gives you the willies, you but the it's like, oh, okay, it was, it was just Dr. Cuddles. <laughs> All right. All right, I got to step up my game here. This one, this next one, was inspired by my daughter. Okay. Okay? Who is 11 years old. And uh, 
while she still may be a little bit young for Twilight Imperium, okay? Yeah, that, yeah. that talking about a beast, we mentioned it earlier. Yes. My friend played like five hours. Oh, easy, uh, easily a five to eight hour yeah. massive political space opera. Yes. You know, uh, gaining resources, uh, political intrigue, uh, cosmic warfare going on. A little deep, a little heavy for an 11 year old. I agree. But you have an alternative. I have an alternative that captures her very interests. Instead of Twilight Imperium, My Little Twilight Sparkle Imperium, inspired, similar to Hobie Chow, by the My Little Pony universe. Okay, okay. okay. In My Little Sparkle Twilight Imperium, conquer Equestria and beyond in this political game of diplomacy and strategic su superiority. Will you lead the Alicorns to victory over the Earth Ponies? Find out as you put the unfortunate reams of My Little Pony knowledge that the fourth grader has put into my head forever into my brain that I cannot get out, all to good use. My Little Pony. No, no. No, it begins again. <laughs> my Little Pony. Uh, something, oh, something, oh, 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 no, my Little Pony. No, something I Love You. <laughs> well, that's the, I didn't think of the commercial. That, yeah, that's anyway. <laughs> no, that sounds good. That definitely tones down, tones down. The, 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 the space opera, yes. the Twilight Imperium, down to a more tangible, palatable <laughs> yes. Yes. taste and, for children. And, and as a side note, in a way, it's almost been a halfway a kid beta tested. You know, so I know the theme definitely works. There you go. <laughs> All right, All right, so, right that so that's round two. two. Yes, uh, My Little Arkham the Willies versus My Little Twilight Sparkle Imperium. Okay. Right. Now round three. Now I'll, I'll kick this round off again. We'll keep we'll ping pong it back and forth. My first uh, entry in round three is based on a very very dense, uh, deep uh, Euro, or not necessarily Euro, but strategy game called. Oh, it's a Euro. Is it? okay. Oh, yeah. call it, okay. Uh, based on my, uh, sorry, based on food chain magnate. Ooh, okay? that's a beast. That is a that's beast. That's a beast of the game. Yeah, uh, it's, it's unforgiving, and it, but it's yes, fantastic. Yes, it's a great game. If you're into heavy Euro games, yes. highly recommend yes. checking out food chain magnate. In, in food, food chain mag, I'll come back to that in a second. In food chain magnate, you are setting up different fast food franchises and delivering burgers, uh, pizza, soft drinks, and whatever throughout the town. Uh, to different houses that pop up. Mm -hmm. um, so my entry for this, for, for, for children that might not ha be able to grasp the concept of being a food chain magnate, is my little food chain magnet. Uh, because I'm using magnet simply because uh, not even adults can pronounce food chain magnate the yeah. correct way. I've watched reviews. <laughs> I, I have worked, I've worked with the distributor. Yeah. And the distributors still call it magnet. <laughs> Just, oh, wow. Yeah. So. Uh, so that's why my fast food, uh, my little fast food magnet, um, as a parent of a fast food loving child in this game, uh, which I've been a parent of three of those. Yes. Okay, good. Yep. You can uh, you you can uh, relate to traveling the town in order to collect all the toys from the various Happy Meals that are available. Yes. So that you can finally appease their insatiable, insatiable gotta have them all mentality and actually finally get in an afternoon nap for once. That's good. I'm bringing a lot of baggage to this game, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, so yeah, you so you, I have to deal with that a lot as a parent looking. Yeah, it's... Uh, that's what I do too. I, I just... I, I It's for the kids. I go around and get all those little cool collectible toys because it's... It's, it's for the boys. It's oh. not It's not for me. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. For, not. not for me. Oh, okay. Uh, true story. Okay. True story. Um, before I had kids, when I was really into Pokemon... Okay. Uh, big time. I was, uh, yes, I'm old enough to play one of the original Pokemon, the blue and red. Oh, wow. When it came out. Oh, oh don't, don't oh, wow me. You're old enough to play it, too. Uh, so, yeah, I was really into it. So, Burger King. Now, now who's bringing their baggage to the conversation? Me. <laughs> um, so, Burger King uh, were giving away Pokemon, stuffed Pokemon. Oh, oh yeah. But they were in Pokeballs, so they, they were random. You didn't know what you were going to get. Okay. Um, and I was super into it. So... Every other night, my wife and I, mm -hmm. the, the the wonderful woman that she is, would go with me to Burger King. Oh my goodness! And buy the kids' meals, <laughs> so I could try to get the Pokemon, because there were three different versions of Pikachu's. <laughs> okay. And they were all different values. All right. On, on eBay. Oh, okay. So were they different rarities? Yeah, there, there were different rarities. Oh, and God. if you had all three, they were selling for like eighty to one hundred dollars on eBay. So then it became a quest. <laughs> 
Oh, no. It so, became a quest for okay. me and my wife. It's gone, gone from hobby to quest. The, the quest. <laughs> uh, I've got to get all three of these. I was able, after eating many a Whopper, Chaz, <laughs> uh -huh. and greasy Burger King fries. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was able to collect all three of those. You got them all. I got them all. Got to catch them all. I did. And then I enjoyed them, but then I said, you know what, I've, I've enjoyed them, but a lot of people were looking for those, so I put them on eBay uh -huh. and uh, was able to turn them in and get some decent money for it and probably make up for maybe half of the money I spent <laughs> I was gonna say, on probably. all those uh, burgers and fries. <laughs> so, yes, the collectible kids' toys aren't just for kids, just saying. <laughs> so that's good. All right. So uh, in the, my submission to round three. Yes. Another very popular genre of game is 18XX oh, games. Yes. Oh, yes. It's based yeah. on trains, with XX being a year. There's a lot of different uh, years that ga train games are based on. Right, right. I'm interested in this, but I've barely even scratched the surface of these games. Again, that is a lot for Aren't, a child to handle. And uh, it's not like the games where you're making train runs. It's all about like stocks and running the company yes, more, isn't it? Yes, it is. It? It's, okay. very, uh, it's a very economical game. Okay. okay. All based in the theme of being in the 1800s. Yes. And there's a lot of different versions okay. of these. Okay. So again, that's a little too much for kids. So what? What if we, what if we uh, maybe try to cut down the amount of uh, effort and, and thought into that, and just like just cut it in half? So oh, okay. I'm going to offer my little nine X X. Okay. 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 So a nine X X. So not not the train period. Let's go back a little bit further. And oh, we're further cutting we're cutting the years in half. Yeah. So I, I figure it had to be easier to run uh, economic businesses, you know, in the in the nine hundreds. Okay. Then probably now. So I would I would imagine so. So to to simplify this game, here's here's the synopsis. Okay. All right. So discover the world of tenth century in nine X X. In China, the Song Dynasty was established. The Muslim world experienced a cultural zenith, especially in Al Andalus under the Caliphate of Cordoba. Uh, yeah. uh, additionally, it was the zenith for the Byzantine and Bulgarian empires. I mean, that's something every child can just uh, latch into. Uh, it's like My Little Pony, Byzantine Empire. A lot, easy, a lot more digestible than uh, like an 18X. I, I should show you the posters hanging in my daughter's room. Mm -hmm. you know, Byzantine, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's cer certainly um, aggressive. <laughs> uh, a very, very, very informative uh, game synopsis. So there. It's educational. Yes, it's edutainment. Yes. yes. There yes. you go. All right, so that's for round three. We have uh, my little food chain magnet because I give up, and uh, my little nine XX. My little nine XX yeah. was round three. Round two was. Uh, my Twilight Sparkle Imperium. Yes. And my little Arkham the Willies. Yes. Round yes. one was my little Warhammer 4 and my little Dice Shooter. Yes. So, yeah. So, out of each of those three rounds, pick which one would win to you, which you would rather play and, and bring out on to, with your uh, children on game family game night. And we're going to, everyone who does use the hashtag to make their vote will be entered into uh, today's contests. And, uh, Whoever wins this between you and I, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out something. We'll come up with some steaks uh, to. Ooh, to I do. like steak. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a steak. Buy a steak. Ooh, perhaps there is a nice restaurant. Maybe we could end end there the convention is. by someone being purchased a nice steak. Would would not be bad. Okay, you know what? If we're gonna go that far though. We're going to come up with another contest or something, and we're going to have the winner of two out of three contests, because if that's on the line, I'm going to try a lot harder for the upcoming <laughs> yeah, contest. Yeah, that wasn't on the line before, <laughs> before we came up with these. Well, look, we are getting ready to close out our first segment on this day two of yes. the 2018 Dice Tower live stream. Yes. And we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back in one hour. We're going to come back at 11 p.m. Eastern time. No, wait, uh, we're going to come back also at 11 a.m. Uh, instead of PM. We're going to come back at 11 a.m., which it means it's before noon, Eastern Time. Uh, we're going to have Bezier games. Uh, actually, we're also going to have WizKids at 11 because Bezier is at 1.30. This is what happens when you try to do this from memory <laughs> and not look at the prompter off to the side, which has this information readily available for those who are presenting this information so this so isn't live, two, right? <laughs> Take two. <laughs> dump. We need the dump button. <laughs> dump the last three minutes. All right. Thank you for watching this <laughs> intro stream for day two so, of Dice Tower 2018. Yeah. So just 
hold on, just to recap, to make sure that people actually understand what's going on. We're gonna come back in one hour at 11 a.m. With WizKids. Eastern with, time with, with WizKids games. Yes, yes. And, and then after that at 1.30, we will be joined by Bezier. So uh, in the meantime though, it's Keep only day two and I'm, my mind's already scrambled. I got two more days of this. <laughs> well, good luck, good luck to us. So yes, uh, in the meantime, keep the questions and comments and everything on Twitter uh, coming with the hashtag because uh, whether you're uh, voting on your favorite My Little Game or just asking us questions in general, which we will be coming back to later in the day, uh, keep them coming and we'll address those. And in the meantime, we're going to go uh, take a little break to get ready for our next segment with 11 a.m. <laughs> with whoever. With WizKids. With WizKids. <laughs> and we will see you then. So take care and we'll uh, see you in a bit. With WizKids. 11 a.m. Eastern. Eastern.